happy for you to join us today for this uh, communications uh, webinar on how to build a plan. I'm just going to share my screen really quickly and have a, a short uh, presentation on the joint fund and how, how we are trying to work on this plan and some of the activities that we've been doing. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just want to start off first with uh, the, the allocation of finances towards the uh, a communications plan uh, is three to five percent of the total joint program funding. Uh, and I want to say one of the, the biggest and most important things for each country team to do is dedicate a focal point. And I know majority of you all have done so. Um, if not, it would be nice to do so. And um, just to just to mention that Max's team. So if you I'm sure you've already been in contact with them, Maria, Heidi, Nomi, uh, they will also be managing, but I will be the main communications focal points for any external comms that comes in from from the joint programs. And I know we will go over how to develop a plan and to designate responsibilities. But I just really wanted to highlight that the three to 5% of monitoring reporting in strategic comms will come from the total JP. Um, and our website, our website is actually very important to these joint programs because each country has a, a, a country page that we've created for you. And in this country page is a description of the joint program, um, all the donors that are all the partners that are working on it. and. Uh, all, all the important information, but besides that, any type of articles, press releases, uh, any external communication that comes in from your side, it will be published on that page and on our main page. So we could, we on the headquarters level will share out to our donors and partners. So we could really amplify the work that you are doing by, by sharing these articles that um, that show progress in the field, uh, and these in these facts sheets and all the supporting all the supporting um, information will be placed on your country page. Uh, and I know for our integrated social protection uh, portfolio has been very heavy in these things, and I know um, the traction has been positive. So we really do want to. Uh, influence you submitting things for us. Uh, at the moment, majority of everything has been in English, uh, only because we, we try to send it out to our international audience, to our partners and donors. But uh, I'm always happy to put it in a native language, uh, substituting the English. So that's something we could work together. And the Secretariat does run the website. So anything that goes uh, on it goes channels through me first, and then we will uh, publish it. And social media, social media is also very, very big on uh, amplifying your messages. And for the joint fund, we only have one platform. Uh, each country pretty much uses their own, their own, um, the agency uh, like Twitter or Facebook or whatever social media platform. And then they either tag us or they sent us the information and we publish it on ours. Uh, we have not yet allowed other agencies to open a joint SUG fund uh, country page, only for the fact that it's easier to manage it this way. Um, and so far, it's been successful. So uh, our biggest platform that we use is Twitter. And, uh, you know, I've, I've placed on this page as our, our main hashtags and, you know, how to always tag us and stuff, but we've also opened a YouTube channel. In this YouTube channel, we're happy to uh, post any videos that come from the countries. And we always have our webinars there and then our global videos that we created about the joint fund. And just recently, what we've created is a podcast and we're very proud of this podcast. And we have been focusing it on uh, how, to, how to really amplify uh, investing in in the sustainable development goals and thus far one of our latest podcasts was on a blue economy and we had uh, members of government UN agency investors uh, and the head of the secretariat as a moderator discuss 
the blue economy or discuss the topic at hand and saying like the importance of it and the importance of investing in it. So this is something we, we really want to develop as we move forward. And we welcome all countries to, to really participate and join us. And if you also have ideas, we very much welcome it. And we're happy to work together with you because this is something that's been growing um, surprisingly, but very happily, it's been growing and we, we really, really like uh, to really enhance it as we go forward with it. And specifically talking about the COVID recovery efforts in it. Um, just to note, some of the helpful guides that we have are our branding, our style guide, any social media guidelines and communications content that will be all shared with you after this webinar. And if it hasn't been already, um, I will make sure to contact all the focal points and also share it with you. But if you have any questions regarding these, like the guidelines and the branding, I know they're, they're we might be quite heavy on the direction due to like the partnerships or donors, but we're happy to work with you on that and um, and to walk through that too, if you want a one on one level. And in a nutshell, I think that that those are our main uh, bullet points that we want to talk about from the Join SDG Fund on how to amplify our messages. But to build a strategic communications plan, I want to hand over the floor to David, um, as he is an expert in this field. And we're very happy and grateful to have him on board as well. So let me just stop sharing my screen. Okay. And the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, uh, first off, uh, I want first off I want to thank Liz and everyone for the opportunity to uh, to present uh, to present and to speak with all of you today. And um, and the reality is is that um, my goal today is just as much to open lines of communication with all of you. Um, uh, in the interest of exchanging ideas and practices uh, about communications moving forward, as it is about hopefully providing support for all of you today and how to conceptualize a strategy around SDG communications. Uh, this is frankly uh, driving an SDG communications strategy is critical to UNCDF uh, because it is critical to our mandate. Uh, and I'll get I'll that I'll explain that in a little uh, in a little bit, but that's just to say that I really hope that beyond just my being a resource for all of you, I hope that we can open lines of communication where um, I, you can reach out to me uh, for any support or any insight that you feel I can provide in the future. And of course, uh, if there's any interesting ideas and practices that all of you as comms practitioners are doing, then. Uh, I would love to. Uh, I would love to hear about them and possibly integrate them into UNCDF's work as well. So thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to say that really the, this presentation today is is reflective of a lot of the best thinking of a lot of people within UNCDF, and there are people within our HQ in New York, and there are people within our field offices, as well as uh, those who are communicating in different areas of SDG finance, whether it's municipal finance, local development finance, uh, digital finance, or for that matter, finance that is uh, centered on small and medium-sized enterprises. And so, or for that matter, um, communications that relates to partnership development, which, which I wanna focus some time on today as well. Um, but these are, uh, these are the people that have all contributed to uh, not just this particular presentation, but to the day-to-day -day driving and leadership, as well as many others who aren't mentioned here uh, on the comm side for UNCDF. So I just I wanted to to provide their names and their and their contacts as well in the event that these are you might want to reach out to them in a, in the future. So I'd like to start by um, just a quick introduction of UNCDF, less to talk to you about who we are, but more to explain why SDG, um, SDG communications and specifically the area of financing the SDGs is so critical uh, to our to our day to day work and to our mission. Uh, as UNCDF has been around since 1966 and 
basically our mandate revolves around the utilization of our capital mandate. We have a unique capital mandate within the UN system. In addition to grants, we can issue loans and guarantees. Uh, in addition, we utilize a number of instruments, uh, whether it's uh, digital, uh, whether it's on the digital financial services side, whether it is partnering with outside investment firms to create third-party investment platforms. Uh, we use the, the capital mandate, our instruments, and our innovation uh, to offer last-mile finance models that unlock public and private resources, especially at the domestic level to reduce poverty and support local economic development. So, but I, but more to the point, uh, what UNCDF's work truly centers around and, and just pulling from the words of our executive secretary, it, it relates to an international financial architecture that does not favor local economic development in the LDCs. And that is where our work comes in. Our primary mandate uh, involves the least developed, the 47 least developed countries. Uh, and, but not only is this our primary mandate, but as we see it, the 47 LDCs are precisely the crucible where SDG achievement will be will uh, will occur. The simple fact of the matter is the underlying promise of the SDGs is to leave no one behind, and that and that. And that fundamentally includes those who have been left behind uh, by the international financial architecture, those who have been underserved by that architecture, uh, LDC populations, including women, including youth, including small and medium sized enterprises, including um, micro farmers and things uh, and other constituencies. And, and the reason I flag this is again, less because of UNCDF and more because as you're starting to conceptualize your communication strategy, it's always good to remember precisely the, the, uh, the, the underlying challenge that your, S, that your specific SDG project is looking to address. Uh, because that's really going to be your North Star as you're creating a communication strategy. Um, so briefly, in terms of our structure, uh, UNCDF has basically operates within a three pillar system, financial inclusion, and that largely has become digital financial inclusion, local development finance, where we work with where we work to enhance and increase the fiscal space for local governments, and the L, and our LDC investment platform. This is a platform that was created so that the SMEs that we have been supporting through our other two pillars. Uh, once we got them from, say, the startup, we would have a platform that would uh, enable them to be potentially be capitalized so that they go from startup to scale. And that way, in our three pillar structure, we've been we provide the we provide the, the value proposition of being able to support SMEs in the last mile throughout their business cycle. And as you see, women's economic empowerment is articulated across all of our work. And our primary SDGs are one in 17, but we have an impact on five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 13. So moving on just to, from that brief introduction, thank you for, thank you for, uh, for giving me that opportunity to plug you in CDF. Um, let's start with developing the contours of your strategy. And I, I think the easiest way to articulate this is before you start th before you start thinking about the what, as in what you are, the messages. What are you going to say? What is the messaging that you're going to you're going to communicate? It's good. It it's it's a good practice as you're developing your strat the contours of your strategy to start with the why, the who, and the how. So let's start with the why of the strategy. So and that and the why relates to the strategic goals. Why have this strategy? We know that we know what the, the main goals are as it relates to the joint SDG fund, but that doesn't answer the question of what is the why of your strategy? Why have a communication strategy? And, and really more to the point, what are you looking to achieve? What are your strategic communications goals? That's first and foremost, a great place for, for you to start as you're creating the strategy. And to be clear, this is not, 
Um, this, these are just examples of, of your strategic goals. These will, your, you will determine your strategic goals, but um, they may very well relate to uh, how your communications will allow you to access follow-on financing and funding for your project how you can expand awareness of your project, how you can increase support and affinity for the SDG agenda, and also how you can position the UN brand. So again, these by no means have to be your goals, but a, good, but a strong place to start in creating your communication strategy uh, should involve really, again, the why. Outline specifically what your communications goals are. From there, you get to the who. And ultimately, and again, this I, we messaging we when we talk about communication strategy, we do get to messaging very quickly, and we should. But the 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 danger of shooting over to messaging too quickly is that you may overlook the fact that you have different constituencies and different stakeholders that you have to reach out to. And by identifying your goals first, that enables you to see who, uh, the who of the strategy, who are you targeting? So by identifying your goals, that enables you to think about, well, I have to have distinct messaging and potentially distinct products for member states, as opposed to ministries in ministries in federal, regional, local governments. Let's say, for example, uh, you want to work with regulators. Well, the content and the communications that you're going to be using in order to um, in order to bring them into into a given project would be very different from what you would be doing uh, in terms of communicating to member states or what have you. So, so identifying the who is really about identifying the different constituencies that you're targeting with your communication strategy. And then the how, once you have the why and the who, then there's the how, which relates to the specific areas or drivers of communication that you'll be relying on to advance your goals. And, and again, this is not exhaustive, but uh, it's, it, it, it covers a number of the, of the levers. What will, how will you be utilizing content? How will you be, what is your, what will be your strategy on thought leadership, media relations, digital communications? And, and so as you're developing a strategy, you're layering all of these points together. Again, the, your strategic goals, the why of the strategy, who you're communicating to, uh, your, your constituencies, and then the how, which is again, your, your, your levers. Once you've identified those points, uh, it'll, the, it, it'll be important just to determine uh, your assets and to and 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 again, I don't know if this necessarily relates. Um, I, it's probably country team by country team, um, but I can. But from a UNCDF standpoint, uh, there have definitely been some country teams that have had to uh, look to consultancies and look to resource and look to procurement in order to fill the resources that they needed, uh, specifically in relation to their levers. So consider your assets, consider your personnel, consider the strengths that you, that your, your, the strengths that you have, the relative strengths that you have on your communications teams, and then determine what you have in house and then what you will have to procure uh, in order to fill any gaps, whether it's on social media and digital communications, whether it's on content creation, public relations and media, whether it's creating visual content, video content, um, or whether uh, you will need to onboard or procure support for the purposes of events. From now, from here, we've discussed the why, the who, and the how. Um, now we'll go to the what, and this is really in terms of what you're communicating, what your messages are. And this is really where um, the very niche, uh, very distinct universe that we all exist in of how do we take SDG projects, how do we take development projects and spin that, not spin in a bad way, but create messaging and content 
on the distinct um, on uh, on the distinct bases, on the distinct data points, on the distinct source material that we have that we operate with uh, in this space. So basically, first and foremost, your results reporting framework will be your guide, and and this is definitely the case insofar as you and CDF is concerned. Um, the results reporting framework is your guide because. That is, as all of you know, the set of parameters that determines what success is uh, through the prism of your donors. Uh, your the RFs are uh, the you know the agreed upon impacts, the agreed upon outcomes, targets, indicators uh, that basically we all or and and obviously you and CDF that is the map by which we have to report success to our donors. And so by extension, that this becomes really the source material uh, for the purposes of your communications projects from long form to short form to messaging, it really becomes everything. And it's not just a matter of efficiency. It's it, it ensures that you're going to have a consistent narrative being delivered to all of your constituencies. So really, when you look at your results reporting framework, this is really more than just the, the, the set of data and indicators that you're going to use vis-a-vis -vis, um, your, 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 your donors or your funding partners. This will really be your North Star as you're determining uh, your messaging. And then there's identifying how to communicate the results the what to different stakeholders. And, and this is where the how and the what come together. And basically, as you're conceptualizing your strategy and you've gone from why to who to how to what in terms of your results, something strategically to keep in mind is that there, is that there needs to be a consistency across your, con across your content offerings. Uh, but they also have to be pro <clears throat> provided in different ways. The good news is that this is very doable because this is something that we have done as UNCDF. This is something that um, uh, agencies throughout the UN system uh, are doing. And it's, it's really mastering the art of understanding how to take that nexus of results reporting and, and turn it into different content for different audiences. And, and this means also thinking about it from the standpoint of different messaging. So for example, um, these content streams that you're looking at, by and large, they all reflect the same results from our reporting to the executive board, to our annual report for the general public, to our results reporting to our donors, um, to our designed results reporting that's basically more for policymakers and stakeholders uh, to our content blogs and videos. By and large, these content streams really represent the, the, the results that are at the core of our results reporting framework. But what we're doing and what all, what everyone, what we all need to do with really thoughtfulness and intentionality is think about how we can create different content from those results for different audiences in different forms. Uh, a resolution, uh, a resolution report to an executive board will obviously have a different look, a different feel, a different style, a different sensibility than what we would provide to the general public in the context of um, of an annual report. But there is but these are two versions of ultimately the same story. Um, and then even still, what we're, then you also have to think about what is, how can, when you're creating these, the content, what's the strategic approach I should have for each of these products? And what I mean by that is let's take the, uh, let's take the results reporting for donors and the results reporting for policy makers, stakeholders in the private sector. So this is uh, the mid. So if you look at the the thumbnail in the in the middle of the, the third and the fourth, these are two different versions of the same product. 
uh, one of the things that we were that we were thinking about in in UNCDF last year was we are responsible to deliver uh, a results report for one of our trust funds, which is the Last Mile Finance Trust Fund. Now we have to deliver a results report that has everything that you would expect from a results report. It's very it's very data heavy. It's very tied to the results reporting framework. Uh, it's very much focused on, again, the impacts and the indicators and nothing, nothing wrong with that. Our thinking was that ultimately development agencies have to report to policymakers and they have to report to other stakeholders uh, for the purposes of, of financing, of funding. And so what occurred to us was that at some point, the, the messaging that would exist in the results reporting for a donor, for a development audience, might not translate for a policymaker audience. So could we create a separate product that could tell the same story, but tell it in a way that would resonate more with the policymakers that we would be looking to communicate with? And so that's when we came with a designed product that is shorter, it's more condensed, it's a bit more narrative, telling the same story, but again, telling it in a different way. And so that's just to say that this, um, as, this, as you're co conceptualizing the strategy, and again, you're thinking about the why, the who, the how, and the what, always remember that at some point, you're gonna have to communicate the same narrative, the same story, to different stakeholders. And you're gonna to have to do it in different ways and in different formats. And so as you're creating the strategy, be very conscious of that because that'll be essential to driving uh, your strategic goals from, the stamp, from your com communication standpoint. The human narrative. Um, I've, 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 I've heard again and again um, the, uh, ab about the challenges of how to take the SDGs uh, and tell um, tell a human story, and and the reality is is that the the SDGs actually do, at least in my view, um, a, a a pretty solid job of of already providing that framework of that foundation for a human narrative. Um, so if you look to the left, this is um, this is obviously the um, the, uh, the the seventeen SDG goals. And it talks about how the vision is a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity. Um, and when you add on to that, the fact that now it's attached to a timeline, we are now all within the decade of action for the implementation of the SDGs. And so when we talk about shared prosperity, when we talk about leaving no one behind, and when we talk about needing to do it within um, now a 10 year timeline, all of these things lend to um, a compelling human narrative besides the human narratives that you'll see by virtue of your projects. So I just wanted to, to, to flag that to say that really the SDGs, at least as I see them, uh, really already provide a, a nice foundation for, for really some good human storytelling. Uh, you'll see to the right, there's um, obviously our logo and our, you'll see our, our boilerplate. I, if you noticed, I bolded the words last mile. And the reason I did is because when you look at any of our storytelling, um, and this is from a personal standpoint, what resonates for me is that what we're talking about is the last mile. What we're talking about are communities that, um, again, have been historically uh, and systematically underserved by a global financial ecosystem, a global financial architecture that is horrible at funneling finances to where those finances are needed the most. And so absent a change in the status quo, what will end up happening is finances will, um, the areas where, where the needs are greatest are precisely the areas where finances will flow the least. And, and, and by the way, this is not my language. This is language that came from UNCDF strategic framework. And the reason I say it is because again, 
That's a very human narrative. And it runs through all of our storytelling. It runs even through our data storytelling. It runs through our human storytelling. It is at the center of our mandate. It, it gives us credibility when we can say that, um, that the crucible of the SDGs will be the LDCs because if they continue to be left behind, we wouldn't have achieved the, the SDGs. So again, all of that is to say that the SDGs are, can be quite bountiful in, uh, from the standpoint of, of human narratives and human storytelling. Uh, so uh, so just, 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 to, just wanted to, to flag that. Given that, I think a nice uh, tool, uh, just a nice practice that can help you. And, and now we're getting even deeper into the messaging. So now we're talking about how are you going to communicate the, 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 the importance of your project on a, on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. And what you could do is create a messaging architecture. And frankly, I, I don't even, I, I wouldn't even want you to see this as a, um, as a formal part of your, of your strategy, though you're welcome to provide that as well. Uh, but at the very least, it's a great exercise uh, because it'll provide clarity for you in terms of, in, in terms of sharpening precisely what you wanna say. And, um, so, and it can start with a mission or vision statement at the top that can drill down into three core messages. If you can find um, a, a top line mission or vision statement and that can drill down to core messages that has alignment with your teams uh, in terms of best uh, presenting your, your SDG projects, then frankly, the messaging points are gonna be, from there, it's gonna be very easy for you to put together. So again, this really, um, goes back, to, this really goes to the, 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 the fundamental core message. Um, and again, that'll be rooted in your results and, and everything of that nature. But now it's about, and I just want to get back to this, it's about taking these results and how are you going to, how are you going to present those results narratively? And so I, that's, I, that's why I wanted to just to, to introduce this, this part rather, uh, to introduce this quickly. Um, I'm going to skip through the next couple of slides. I think you're getting this, this deck as a, as a resource. So I wanted to present, there are a couple of examples of vision statements that come from UNCDF, and these relate specifically from our pillars. Uh, I've already introduced at least one, um, for, and this is from our corporate boilerplate, so you could see that at the bottom right. Um, as an example. Uh, I'm also providing a couple of other examples of vision statements, one involving our digital strategy and a mission and a vision statement in, involving our local development finance practice. And, and I'll just say something else. Um, so uh, I don't know if any of my colleagues from the local development finance practice are on this call. Um, so this, this mission and this vision statement really, um, it, it predates my time at UNCDF, but really the, uh, the, 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 the beauty of, of what the practice has done in terms of that mission and that vision is that it's, it's cre they've created so much alignment around that mission and vision statement that they don't have to think about what their value proposition is. They know what their value proposition is. And that just re that, in that reinforces their engagement with their donors, with member states, uh, with NGOs, with with the private sector, and so, and so, whether this is part of your formal communication strategy or not, it'll go a long way towards establishing the messaging discipline and the consistency and the cadence of message that you that a successful program uh, communications program needs. Uh, partnership development. So, why is partnership development? In a communication, in a, um, in a discussion about communication strategy, I probably would not have had an answer to this question a year ago, um, quite frankly. Uh, and maybe that just maybe that just means I'm 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 just not good at this job. I don't know. But um, when we 
when we entered around this time last year, uh, when we were strategizing for 2020, uh, my unit, and I work in the Partnerships Policy and Communications Unit within UNCDF. And uh, we had a new Partnerships Development Specialist come on board, um, uh, this, my colleague, his name is Abhishek Dhavan, and he's, he's an unbelievable resource for the organization. And um, it occurred to us, and ultimately the, the unit, that it didn't make sense that partnership and communications would be siloed or that partner or that partnership and communications would only work together when it was necessitated when a project came about oh it's it's time to re to report our results to um it's time to report our results to our donors let's start putting together our communications materials let's work together now it occurred to us that that is not optimal um, and, and if you think about it, it's also counterintuitive. Everything we do depends on relationships and partnerships really, really owns and, and, and defines those relationships, or I should say they co-own those relationships. But communications owns the channels. And so the reality is, is that there is a point when your partners are gonna rely on the strength of your channels to determine the strength of the partnerships. And the strength of the partnerships are ultimately gonna support all of the results that you are going to need for your communications. So if anything, partnership, partnership development and communications should be in constant, uh, they should be constantly working together. And that doesn't mean that it's always easy. Uh, it's and and sometimes you you have to figure out clear. Uh, David, uh, sorry, uh, just to, to have a timekeeping, um, just to be oh. kind of end of time. We uh, I think if we want to have a couple of questions, it's good. Oh, um, sorry, I will. Things. So I will wrap up in uh in in two minutes. So I'm I'm so sorry. I I promised I wouldn't go long, so I apologize. But I will. Uh, this is this is my last section. And then, in fact, there are a few examples um, that will be uh, available in the deck that will be shared with all of you. So um, I think this is, oh, I, the last two slides. Um, thank you for that, I'm sorry. Um, so really, uh, as you're aligning, so as you're creating your communication strategy, bear in mind, all, keep a connection with partnership development as part of that communication strategy. So what that means is that on the partnership side, Partnerships can offer communications tools to promote the partnership. And in fact, many of the tools that you have for the purposes of communications can be repurposed and recreated specifically for partnerships. You can have partnership specific newsletters. You can have partnership specific content. You can have partnership specific webinars. They could be co-hosted. Um, and you could bring, and even more to that, um, you could communications can be part of the regular engagement that partnerships has with its donors. And so just a quick example on our end was uh, we did a news, we did a, a three week newsletter campaign uh, during uh, the GA. It was one of, it was one of our um, uh, push marketing uh, uh, approaches for the GA. And one of our newsletters was dedicated to CETA. Um, and so, as you can see, it was a co-branded uh, UNCDF newsletter that went uh, that that provided several examples of our um, of our collective work work that CEDA was uh, work that CEDA was supporting. What this does is that this enables CEDA to go to their policymakers and the and 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 the leadership within CEDA and talk about how UNCDF is supporting their work. And it ultimately deepens the partnership. And what we could do on the communication side is, is that it gives us another complexion to tell again uh, this, the, the 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 same results reporting story we had the same results we'd been reporting in the past, but to do it in a different way. Um, so partnership partnership development should be a critical part of your uh, uh, communication strategy as you're putting that together. So, um, so as you can see, I have a few examples. Uh, I'm gonna pause here. Um, 
and just that those will be available uh, within um, they will be available within the the presentation that will be provided to you as well as uh, my email. But uh, I hope that was clear, and and I, I'm I, I welcome your questions, and I I truly appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you for that. That was uh, very detailed and I think much needed. And it explained a lot for, for SDG financing and communications. Uh, I just want to open up the floor to questions. And I see that we've already had one question and it goes to if the country offices could create a separate web page. We have had uh, other country offices create web pages. For example, Chile partnered with a tech organization and they have their web page. Also, um, I'm sorry, I, I can't recall the question, uh, the country, but there was one that that opened one under UNICEF's platform, and they have a specific one just for the Joint SDG Fund. At, oh, Brazil, Brazil did that. So yes, uh, if you would like to open one, please, you're able to, but um, of course, connect it with the Joint SDG Funds website, and then you could just send me the information, and we could link it together. But um, but yes, it's it's okay to do so. Uh, if there's any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. I also want to introduce Lisa Kerbiel, the head of the Secretariat. I know she is. Uh, she just attended. She's on this call right now. So if you have a few words, feel free to chime in. Yeah, no, I don't want to preempt any um, comments or questions, but David, that was fantastic. And I think... Um, the different examples you provided, you know, making, building the narrative around SDGs is for some reason often missing, right? We, we talk about these SDGs, which by the way, people in the outside world don't even know what they are. Um, and then they certainly don't know what all 17 are and then the subsets of the subsets. So part of our goal as communicators for these programs is to make it very real. And literally, you know, zone in on that mother and that child and that family and that farmer and that fisherman or, you know, you really have to, to, to almost go, you have to be laser focused in on the story. And I, and I love that you reminded us of that. I loved your point around your vision statement and then your talking points, because if anyone out there is like me and Liz and the team, I mean, we're doing talking points every day. We're either doing them for ourselves, we're doing them for, you know, the bullet points on a slide, we're doing them as we manage up to, in, I'm, I'm assuming at the country level, it's up to the rep or up to the RC, it's up to a government counterpart. If they stay consistent, you, you gain strength in that because then your social media team and all your messaging can keep repeating that. And, you know, investing in the SDGs, I mean, CDF's been leading this, but it's still a new area, quote unquote, right? It, it isn't trended yet. So we are the trendsetters. So you have to unpack it for people. And some of the questions repeat. So the more we have a standardized answer to some of those questions, the better. Um, so I just thought this was so clear. Um, the slides were really clear. So David, sincere thanks to you. I mean, we, we get so much support from, from CDF um, that I, I, I really just want to acknowledge you, but also a lot of your colleagues who've really made this portfolio possible. Um, you know, so really, really sincere thanks. But Liz, I'll, I'll hand back to you. Maybe there's more questions coming in. There's, uh, there's one for David about the good examples. And I know we're going to share everything on Yammer. And then this webinar will also be posted on our YouTube and we'll share it widely. So with those examples. So um, do not worry, we will provide those. If, um, if there are no other questions, um, we could, there could be a bilateral as well. People could just email us or me or David, and then we could uh, answer them one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want to keep us on too, too long. Um, so let me just put in my email. Yeah, thank you, colleague. Maybe some, um, from my side, a few, you know, from, from some of the experience that we had, I think one of the challenges that you will have is, is a, the differentiation of audience is quite high in, in the SDG financing space because we, you will uh, soon recognize that the 
you know, the, the, the difference in the text that you write, uh, if you would like to engage, for example, private sector, private investors, a bank would be very different if you are speaking with the ministry. So uh, one of the, the, the uh, challenges, but also that makes this work interesting is, is, is to be sure that um, this differentiation is, is also clear to you. And that uh, you, as, uh, as David say, in terms of uh, you align it with your partnership strategy, because the, 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 the interaction with, uh, for example, having partnerships with, uh, you know, global compact or, or bank association, et cetera, et cetera, will require um, quite, quite uh, some efforts in, in changing and shifting the language, particularly for component one programs, which are currently really not readable from, from, from you know, non-expert or uh, non-ministry, non-UN um, non uh, um, uh, uh, colleagues. So, so some of the efforts also that we you know, would love you to have is really to try to formulate better what is the project actually about and uh, what your results that you aim to achieve. Because sometimes the way that is currently drafted was, was done you know, following you know, programmatic kind of guidelines for the UN. And, and that's, it, it's, it, it makes it very difficult to communicate. So we would really uh, appreciate, um, appreciate that for you. And Lisa, I'm sure can, can also share some, some example on that, but that's all on my side also. Thank you, David and, um, and Lisa for, um, for organizing this and, and the team. No, I, I do think um, that cannot be understated in the sense that when you are pitching an investment to an external partner, you may not get a second chance to make that pitch. So being clear, listening while you're transmitting is critical. And, and these are all the skills that, that I know all of you possess, but we are trying to help each other. The purpose of this webinar is that we learn from each other as we go through this. And I think um, if you've seen the joint fund talking to some new partners, you know, with some of our videos are reflecting that outreach. It doesn't mean that we got to that video very easily. I mean, I've had very, very up and down conversations with some of those partners to get to the point where they would script on for us or, or, or speak for us because it's a new conversation, you know, investing through the UN is still new to some partners. So I do think we need to remember that reporting to a donor typically wasn't, isn't the same. And I think that's what David was saying. If you're doing something for a member state, it's different when you're doing something for your Twitter account, which is different from when you're talking to a family office who might be willing to, to write you a check. And I think that's that's the nuances that we would love to gather good practices on because we hope that this portfolio is the first of many and, and really replicates and this becomes a resource that we can share with countries that come after the ones on this call because this is the first cohort, but we hope will become repeated. So, but, but really excellent to, to have those reflections. And I think you only learn by doing. So I think Liz, the fact that you're also keeping in touch with so many country teams and seeing how they're going about it you know, those good practices are what we can all share and look at and um, nothing better than a good practice to inspire us and, and help us go forward. So, well done. Lisa, perhaps it's good also to remind colleagues some housekeeping on, on the annual report and uh, because we, we are asking for, for some to report to us just, uh, you know, before concluding um, uh, that we, we are basically also asking uh, colleagues to report on their communication. So perhaps, uh, you know, just a reminder to them this um, before we close and you know anything that the colleagues may may need to do yeah um for the reporting i know we want to just note down about the press releases any for the launches partner meetings um how you acknowledge partners in your documents uh that's also quite important um, and then there's there's just a list of other questions that we could go through bilaterally, bilaterally as well. So um, I know we will share all that information with you. Okay, great. I think um, if no one else has any questions, uh, we could end this call. And then again, uh, if you have any questions for David or I or anyone else from the Secretariat, we're here. We're here to help um, in any capacity.
And thank you. Thank you all for attending. Thank you all for, for participating in this. We're very happy that there is a good outcome and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yet my email is on the presentation. I, I am your resource. Please, 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 um, you know, I'm here at your disposal. And again, I, it, you, I would love to get your ideas and practices as well. This, this is very hard. Um, we're, we are working towards it on our end too. So let's keep our lines of communication open. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Excellent. Thanks, Liz. Well done. Well done, Max. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Noah.